day without missing a beat. We were crossing the border, and while waiting in line, I saw a book in a, in a magazine stand. In the cover was Princess Aurora smiling. What led me to want to change my dark brown hair to a golden one at the age of six? I grew up watching Disney movies and a bunch of cartoons, and I always noticed that the princesses were wide, blonde, skinny, with no imperfections. I, I mean, who gets no wide wig and a flawless and sleeping beauty with her angelic hair? And don't get me started with Cinderella and her classy look. <laughs> when I was six, I had very thick eyebrows and a plum complexion and a big gap between my two front teeth. <laughs> Not to mention my bushy short hair that my mother used to fight with just to get it on a ponytail every morning. So, to no surprise, I didn't identify with them. But I wanted to be pretty like them. I wanted the long and untangled hair. I wanted the pretty eyes. I wanted the perfect smile. What did you just say? My aunt asked. She sounded a little taken aback. I said, I want to be blonde. I answered a little louder this time. Maybe she didn't hear me, I thought. Why? She inquired. Because I want to be pretty. I want to be like all the pretty girls, I explained. Oh, but you are pretty, princess. You don't need to change your appearance. You are cute and pretty as any other girl. In fact, you're prettier than them. I understand that this was said by my aunt, who always complimented my appearance and told me I was lovely and a princess, even though I looked like a gremlin at times. <laughs> Years passed, and now I'm walking down the hallways on my middle school. Instead of comparing myself with Disney princesses, now I'm comparing myself to the women and girls that I see in day, in daily in magazines, commercials, shows, and movies. I will always see them smiling with their flat tummy showing, their perfect white teeth, their blue eyes. I used to get mad at my parents for, and blame them for the way I looked. I know it sounds dumb, but when I tell you her head was a great point. I blame my mother for my round tummy and because, my brown tummy because she gave me food and my father for not putting a stop to this nonsense. <laughs> they replied to my silly complaints by telling me that I shouldn't worry about that and I should be thankful that I'm alive and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> by that time of my life, I used to get very nervous around silly situations. For example, when I had a big <coughs> test or when I talked to people I didn't know or when I got angry or sad. To release that sort of stress, I would scratch myself, my arms, legs, face, my back, until my skin bled. Of course, that left me with scars. My parents tried everything they knew so that I could stop hurting and scarring myself. They yelled at me, they tried to speak to me, they tried every trick. But I always ended up with my skin better the other day. When they saw I couldn't stop, my mother started to look up remedies for the scars. I felt like a guinea pig, going from treatment to treatment. From lotions to laser to honey and plants and back to lotions. I know they did it for my own good, but it hurt sometimes when I saw the look of disappointment. I wanted to stop, but I just couldn't. I didn't love myself at that time. In my head, I was the ugly duckling of the group with my braces and short wavy tangled hair and my scarred arms. The rest of my, the rest of my friends were pretty. Some of them with colored eyes, others with hair like Rapunzel. <coughs> As you can tell, they were the swans of the lake. I used to think that the way I looked was a pretty important part of who I am. It wasn't until I began my sophomore year in high school that I learned to love myself. <coughs> the first week of sophomore year, I got my braces off. I used them for five years. Since the end of elementary school until that eventful year in high school, my teeth were protected by these metal accessories. When I took them off, it felt like I was missing a little part of myself. I got accustomed to it, of course, and I love how my teeth look, and I start to smile more. That year, I met the most confident girl you can imagine. She was unique and given all her self-confidence. She almost resembled the sun. Her name was Anna. She was one of the first girls to talk to me <coughs> that year. I will always admire her because of her original way of seeing life. She was always talking about life as if it was a story. She was very creative and her ideas really inspired me. One day on break, I was looking at her and I wondered, how could she be happy all the time? And I noticed how she always stood with her head held high, <coughs> even if on that day she had bags under her eyes and forgot to brush her hair. One day I didn't have time to put my hair on a ponytail, so I went to school with my hair down. 
I was so nervous because I would rarely let my hair that way because at the end of the day it would end up looking like a bird nest. <laughs> but when I was walking in the hallway, Anna saw me and said, you look pretty with your hair down. I like it. She smiled at me. That was in my confidence meter about a 50% after that. After that day, I wore my hair down more because Anna liked it and partly because I don't know how to handle it. That sophomore year, I went to Coronado Beach with my family and had a bikini on. But I really never showed it. I would always use on top of clothing to cover me up, mainly, mainly so they could not see the scars on my back. But then a thought came into my mind. What if I take the sweatshirt off? If Anna can come to class with a messy bun and look stylish, I can pull the off the bikini, right? And so I did it. I took off the sweatshirt, called my buddy, and showed the world the pink bikini. It felt weird at first, and I was starting to regret the decision. I felt like everyone was staring at me and the spots on my back. So as I was walking, almost running towards a car to change again, I caught my reflection on a car. And instead of focusing on my big thighs, tummy, or the scars, I saw that I looked kind of cute. I love the way the bikini complimented my body, and that my hair looked good, and it felt great. I didn't look like those college junior models or Victoria's <laughs> Secret angels. But I swear I felt like one. And for the first time in a long time, I felt comfortable in my own skin. Ever since that day, I have let go all the negative views I had over my body. I learned to love and embrace my tummy, my jiggly legs, and most importantly, the scars that make me who I am. <laughs> Once you love yourself in a sip, who you are, I can guarantee you it will feel like lifting a big weight off your shoulders. I realize it's not the way I look that is important. It's the way I perceived and felt about myself. Because once I accepted who I am, I found myself at peace and began to feel confidence in everything. I sometimes wish to travel in time and meet with my six-year-old self. When I was wishing to change my hair and, and say, Keep your head up, and don't let your prom fall for your princess. <laughs>